Hello, today I'm joined by Leo Vandenval. He's the general manager of Assembly on Americas. Uh, welcome, Leo. Thank you, Trevor. And, Good to uh, see you. Welcome yeah. in our booth. Thank you. Well, it's an exciting time for you today because uh, obviously this is the American debut of the iFlex machine. Uh, this is the machine that was launched, of course, at, uh, at Provectronica. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's uh, a big departure from uh, your previous platforms. And uh, maybe you can, uh, for the sake of our American viewers, you can take us through some of the different configurations yeah. uh, and features of, of the iFlex. Yeah. yeah. yeah the iFlex is really the next generation of machines, mm. a future-proof concept. We have, built, we have always been known for speed and quality and accuracy. But now we added a lot of flexibility to these machines in every possible aspect. Mm -hmm. You have independent dual lanes, you have huge component range, large boards, so enormous amount of flexibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has three modules for your, for your question. A T4, which has four independent gantries, a T2 with two independent gantries, and an H1, which is more a fine pitch play. So. Right. Uh, the D4 can handle uh, reaches up to 51,000 components per hour mm -hmm. per, uh, per unit. Mm -hmm. So if you can have eight of these modules together in a line and they all act as one machine. So okay. you can even have up to 400,000 components per hour if you want. It's a huge number. Huge number. Yeah. But you can also have any mix of modules, T4s, T2s. The mm -hmm. T2 is more a line balancer. Mm -hmm. So depending on your application, you go more with T4s or T2s or H1s. And you can mix and match these modules depending upon your application. Right. Right. You can also nicely yeah, break up the line if you want. If you have six modules, you can make it one big line mm -hmm. or you can make it two lines of uh, mm -hmm. three or three lines of two. So mm -hmm. also over there you have a lot of flexibility, manufacturing flexibility. Right. So the, the T4 um, it can be configured with a, a dual head as well, each, each of the gantries. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, the standard, each gantry comes with two heads. Mm -hmm. And so we will con we continue to use over here the single pick and place mechanism that we have developed and perfected in the AX machines. Mm -hmm. The big advantage is that we have continuous component monitoring. So we're the only one who are doing that. Mm -hmm. So at any moment of time, the machine knows exactly where the component is. Mm -hmm. So we don't rely only on vacuum sensing. Always the machine keeps an eye, really literally, on the component within right. the laser field. Right. So we make sure that we never lose a component. We always keep track of every component mm -hmm. and we place it very delicately. Mm -hmm. Because also every of these hats has programmable placement force. And we can have placement force down to 0.5 Newton. So we can do very delicately, really delicate. place any component and never have any cracking risk whatsoever. Right, right. Uh, okay, that's, uh, that's certainly uh, very, very interesting. Um, now on the dual lane, one of the flexible features there is of course that uh, you could use one in, in the United States, for example, you could use one line for prototyping, the other one for doing your medium to high volume. Yes. Yeah. And I'm very excited about that, so that we now have dual lane, and mm -hmm. you can use dual lane like it's used for more higher volume applications, where you have the top side and the bottom side of a cell phone. Mm -hmm. But for our market over here in the Americas, especially in the United States, where flexibility is key, mm -hmm. now you can use it in a little different way. You can still use as a customer your single lane often and your single lane screen printer. Connect that to your real lane, and that's the highway. That's right. where you run your high volume products. Mm -hmm. And then you have the front lane available that you can use for NPI, prototyping, small batches. So you really have the best of both worlds in one line only. Mm -hmm. And that brings a huge advantage also from a footprint perspective, an energy consumption perspective, mm -hmm. and also from an operator efficiency perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now you can do one, if you have a high volume runner, you run it. And if you have more high volume, you run this in parallel and it's completely independent. Mm -hmm. And But now suddenly you get one board that you need to make and you do it like that. You pull out the trolleys. By the yep. way, these are now the new trolleys. Yep. They are extended, so you have more feeder slots than the uh, very module than we had on the AX. Right. So that was going to be my next question. Yep. What, what's the, the feeder capacity on, on these systems? So if you have up to eight modules, let's assume that you have more than a thousand feeder slots. Right. So you have a lot of flexibility also over there. Right, right. Okay. 
And the nice thing about it, they're on trolleys, you pull them out, mm -hmm. but not only for the feeder trolleys, mm -hmm. you also do that for the tray trolley over there as well. Yes, yes. So tell me a little bit about this tray trolley, uh, because it seems a fairly unique system, uh, uh, the way that you have the, the trays stacked up, and, and I believe you said earlier that the, the most uh, commonly used trays stay closer to the top, so there's less travel back Correct. and forward to the, to, to the placement there. Yeah, I think this is probably the best uh, tray feeder design that you can imagine mm -hmm. because it has a cash mechanism mm -hmm. where like in microprocessors you, know, the, you have all the trays in the tray module mm -hmm. but the, the program then determines okay those three trays are used most often uh, and so you put them on the top right and that way it, the, when the machine has to change trays it only has to a very short exchange time mm -hmm. if then and the trays in the bottom are basically backup inventory for the cash system. Right. If one of the trays goes empty, the, the trolley is so intelligent, it takes that tray from the bottom and put it over there in the cash, and the machine runs seamlessly. Right. right. And so the, the nice advantage is that you have a more efficient system mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, it's certainly a very flexible system as the yep. name implies you know yes, and uh, i flex i flex of course <laughs> yeah. so uh, intelligent I think, flexibility <laughs> and i think uh, very very suitable for, for for the north american market yeah. Uh, yeah so we have another machine that we're showing here uh, uh, on the, the booth which is the hybrid machine for the yes. a series uh, can we go over and take a look at that yeah please i would love to yeah we'd yeah. love to talk about that one as well okay thank you so Leo, we're standing here in front of the AS Hybrid machine. AX Hybrid. AX Hybrid. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now this is still using the single pick and place uh, uh, yeah. module head, uh, which is going to give you uh, a really good accuracy. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing with this machine? Yes. I think this machine is the, is the next evolution of the AX, where there are a lot of machines in the world used at high demanding customers. Mm -hmm. But uh, this one has the potential to create a paradigm shift in the industry. This is the first machine ever that can do 100,000 components and 10 micron in one and the same machine. Ah. Ah. So this is a machine that is ideally suited for the semiconductor backend, for module manufacturing, if it's an RFID module or any new module that we as consumer will have in our next generation cell phones, mm -hmm. or for embedded technology. Right. And this machine can then place down to 10 microns accuracy, which is phenomenal for any machine. So it uses the, the proven technology that we have, say the single pick, single placement system, mm -hmm. but it is enhanced in many different ways to get down to the 10 micron level. Right. And also to get down to the 0.5 Newton placement force that is needed for the most a fragile there bare die or the or flip jets right right yeah. so so the the the, the, the five neutron uh, uh, force is for the 0.5 neutron. 0.5 neutron yeah. so that's that's for really really fragile components uh, uh, that uh, yes, are using the gallium, gallium arsenide, arsenide. Uh, yeah. uh, really uh, people uh, feel from a process perspective that they need that to avoid any risk of cracking or damaging uh, these uh, these fragile uh, die. Right, right, right. So when we're talking about wafer uh, uh, processing wafers with this machine, this is really going to be used in a cleanroom application. Yes. Uh, so that's quite a departure from the development path, for example, from a lot of other pick and place machines. Uh, yes. Uh, a lot of the other placement machines are bringing more functionality into the machine in terms yeah. of of, of um, uh, AOI and, and vision systems, uh, yeah. but you're going more down into the really fine tolerance uh, semiconductor back end business, uh, Correct. which is, uh, is is a huge area. Yeah. Uh, now, one of the things you've helped you've used, you're using to help achieve that is you've partnered with Hover Davis on yes. their their. Uh, yeah, that's a key system. thing. Yeah. Yeah. We are now partnering with Hover Davis, mm -hmm. and we can put their Innova uh, direct die wafer feeder on this machine, multiple of them. Mm -hmm. So a lot of customers want to pick from the tape and reel, but some customers want to pick directly from the die. Right. And with this system, which is a proven, very nice system, we connect the direct die wafer feeder to the AX, mm -hmm. and then you pick from directly from the wafer, the, 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 the die are presented to the machine mm -hmm. and then you place them directly on the board. So we can satisfy the needs of customers who want to 
pro uh, provide their components, tape and reel, or want uh, to pick directly from uh, from the wafer. Mm -hmm. And we are very excited uh, about this uh, this partnership with Hover Davis. They right. have a very nice feeder for that. Yeah, and they do a very good job of yeah. feeders, that's for sure. So, one of the other applications you mentioned briefly there was that to, uh, also uh, the, the placement of uh, uh, passives uh, in, in inner layers uh, yes. for, for, for PCBs. Yeah. Um, so that's a uh, uh, that's another very interesting uh, yeah. area. Um, do you have much? Can you tell us a little bit about how that's yeah. working? That I think is in extremely powerful because we as consumers want us to have gadgets are smaller and smaller and smaller, mm. and we want to have uh, a very fast response time. So the frequencies need to go up and up and up. Mm -hmm. So the way to do that is really to start, like you said, embedded these components, the passive components, inside the printed circuit board. Right. So you have, you have a first layer, you place these components in the pocket, put another layer over there, put them in the pocket, etc. until you right. have a multi-layer board. Right. right. But the key thing is, you need to be 100% sure that each and every of these components are placed accurately, and you need to be 100% sure that you have actually placed these components in the pocket. Because once you put the next layer on top of it, yeah. there's nothing you can do nothing about you can it. Do. Yeah. So you need single-digit DPM, you need supreme accuracy, and you also need high speed. Mm. So that's why we think the AX hybrid is ideally suited for these emerging embedded technology uh, right. applications. Right. That's going to open a, a whole new um, yeah. uh, customer base for you because presumably that's going to be the, the, the PCB manufacturers that would be buying that machine. Correct, these uh, are the PCB yeah. manufacturers. These yeah. are the people who were historically more focused on chemical chemistry, process, yeah. chemistry. Mm -hmm. And then you had the assembly companies and mm -hmm. that were our traditional customer. But we have now five customers in Asia and that are really, like you said, they are PCB manufacturers mm -hmm. moving into, into this area. Is that quite a learning curve for them? You know, because as you say, you know, they're essentially chemists. You know, now, yeah. they're, now they're operating machinery. <laughs> well, that's why I think assembly can really help them mm. because we are very well known for our service and our capability and our application knowledge. Mm. So we really can help these uh, these companies to become very familiar and confident mm -hmm. about the whole service mount process. So right. it's not just the machines, also the process technology that we have in our company based upon our 30 years experience in high volume uh, applications. Right. Right. Well, you're certainly doing some very exciting stuff here, Leo. I yes. mean, um, uh, I'm sure you're, you're you're excited about it with your your new owners over in in, in Netherlands. Oh yes. And yep. uh, you know, we we look forward to seeing some you know many installations here in the United States. Yeah, we we too. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you for joining us. This is Trevor Galbraith reporting from the Assembly on Booth here at Apex.